Now, GarageBand for iOS's visual EQ is very musical. It's actually flexible, despite some people saying, well, Logic's got four bands in the middle and then a high shelf and a low shelf. It's got eight different things on, on Logic Pro X, and, well, that's fine. Of course, you can do fine control things with that, but you can on GarageBand as well. Now, just before we go into there, I've got a drum track here, which I'm just going to play and tweak using the visual EQ, so you can hear how flexible this EQ actually is. It's massively powerful, and actually, it's as powerful as any analogue mixing desk. In the olden days, with the analogue desks, you had a bass, a mid, maybe two mids, which you could sweep the frequencies and treble. So it's not dissimilar to this, really. However, the more expensive mixing desks had a, quali a quality factor control, or Q, which enables you to actually narrow these frequency bands. If I just go to the mid, for example, you can see there's sort of a hill. So if I'm boosting at 1000 hertz, I'm affecting frequencies around that as well. The quality factor, what that does is it narrows that band so it's not affecting too much round it. Now the downside to that is that it can sound a bit nasally, a bit unmusical or a bit sort of weird if you're boosting one frequency at the expense of any others or indeed cutting. Now if I go into the drum track again without any EQ and listen to that, there is a bit of a mid frequency there that I would like to cut. It's kind of deeper into that snare drum. It's that sort of sound. So I'm going to go into edit, click the green plus, go to audio unit extensions. Now, just as an aside, if you can't see those, you have to go to settings, find GarageBand in your main settings, and then enable iOS effect plugins. That must happen first. Sometimes it's switched off. Don't know, mine wasn't, but sometimes it is. It saves a bit of memory. So if we go back into GarageBand, I'm going to go and find my AU parametric EQ, the fourth one from the bottom. Now, it doesn't open anything up unless you press the little orange icon and you're met with three boring looking controls. Well, this isn't about pretty pictures. This is about corrective stuff now. So actually, just get stuck into it. Now, the frequency that I want is quite low. I'm guessing it's roughly 800. Doesn't have to be exactly 800, but we can see that there is a third control here. We've got the center frequency and the gain, which means you pick a frequency and then you boost or cut, as in the visual EQ, but we've got our extra control, the Q control, quality factor, which ranges from one, which is quite wide, to 20, which is really rather narrow. Logic can go to 100, but that is really, really narrow. And actually, if you're having to correct stuff to that degree, there's a chance that the actual recording wasn't all that good in the first place. And of course, we all know the front end of a recording, the microphone or the source, is of paramount importance. So if we maybe go have a look at the quality factor reasonably high, I'm going to see what happens now if I cut this frequency. That snare drum is sounding a little bit more present, it's not so bassy, but we can also use it in conjunction with the visual EQ as well. Just say we wanted to bring the mid-range up generally across the kit, but we didn't want to make that snare even more middly, we can do that using the notch EQ. So this is what it was like before. And this is what it's like with. Now, of course, it's all about taste. So somebody might say, well, it doesn't sound very good. Some people might say, oh, that sounds better. Oh, it's up to you. However, it's what you want to hear that's important, not what I want to hear. So what you can also do, if you've got two frequencies, you can actually add a second one. There we go. 
parametric EQ, you can actually add a second thing, a second band. And actually, because there are four free bands, essentially now you've got an EQ that's got bass, middle and treble, and you've got four other bands in the middle. So basically, you've got Logic Pro X's EQ here. Now, of course, that does take up all of your effect plugins and you can't put your reverbs and your choruses and your other th stuff that you want to put on your phases and all that. But what you could do is once you've corrected a track, you can then merge it. And then that track appears as an audio version of what you've been working on. And then you can add all the other effects. Now, the beauty of course is that if you wanted to go back in and change that drum sound, you can because it makes a copy of it. So. As with everything Apple on GarageBand, there are massive workarounds, huge possibilities. Really, nothing is impossible with this. Everything is very, very possible.